In my last video, I started an experiment with a parking heater for my fiberglass trailer. And initially it showed a lot of promise, but things just didn't go as smoothly as planned. It's too hot for the vent cover. So here's the bad news. The place started stinking, stinking of diesel. I don't know why it shut off. The outlook for this particular diesel heater is not very good. Yeah, there's some things that have to be worked out. Am I giving up on it? No. It's a little bit frustrating. So, sorry guys, but yeah, diesel heater round one, it's got some challenges. But roadblocks just make me more determined to get around them. So I headed back to the city for some new ideas. By the next week, I was ready for another go. It's 27.1 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 2.7 degrees Celsius. It will get colder, but I think that's a good temperature to start it off. So, press the on button, it's on, outlet hose is going inside the trailer, 12 volt is right there, and uh, hopefully there shouldn't be any issues. First night I tried it, it was a little bit more of a challenge. Hopefully tonight I won't have any issues or I'll have minimal issues. One new addition was a proper vent. Not only could it take the heat, but it rotated to direct hot airflow. Well, it didn't take long to heat, and it was actually a lot more efficient this time. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's, it only went down to 98% on the battery, which it's uh, using five watts. It sort of cycles between five watts and 11 watts, but right now it's, yeah, like it just went to eight. Now, this vent is hot. Right now, 183 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 84 Celsius. That's just the vent. It is hot. Is it affecting the fiberglass around it? No, I think it's fine but I do have to be careful that I don't point it directly to the floor. This one does swivel, so I've got it on a little bit of an angle, so it's warming up this area as well as the rest of the trailer. Well, the heater's been running for about three hours, and uh, it's basically got up to the maximum temperature under these conditions, which is about 16, yeah, about 16 Celsius, which is about maybe 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Comfortable. Um, for me, actually, it's a little bit too warm. I'd actually prefer it to be a little cooler for sleeping, but I can live with it. Right now, it's okay. And the tick, 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 and I'll shut up so you can listen to it. I don't really like it. Um, it's not super loud, but you know it's there. We'll see how it does, or see how I do, when it gets a little quieter and I'm ready to sleep. It's okay, but I wish it wasn't there. That night, the winds picked up a little and brought with them a new problem. No. Okay, I'm a little busted on this one. Did I expect wind? Yes. Did I expect snow? Well, yeah, it's winter. It's the mountains. Yes. Did I expect wind and snow at the same time so that I couldn't put my awning down to protect the diesel heater that's 
outside. No, I didn't expect that. So I had to improvise. With snow falling and the possibility of freezing rain as well, I needed to do something fast. So I fastened an umbrella to the back of my folding chair to protect the heater from the elements. That got me through the night. Eight o'clock, sun's just coming up. What a night. In typical Alberta weather, it actually warmed up in the night and rain replaced the snow. The heater was not damaged, but this part of the test was over, so I turned it off. Well, it's gone from snow to rain to sleet, a little bit of ice pellets, but I think it's going back to snow again. So my biggest challenge today is just trying to replenish my power. And it uh, doesn't look like I'm going to get much sun, even though it's one of the shortest days of the year anyway. But will I get anything out of clouds? Will it be enough to recharge the battery enough for using diesel again? I guess we're going to find out. These were certainly not ideal conditions to generate solar power, as the ice and snow on the panels would make them less effective. I did hope to recover some of that 27% lost on my power station, but conditions just seemed to be getting worse. So, the results of the second night, of the second test of the diesel heater. Were they any better than the first? Not really. It did heat consistently. Uh, because I had more insulation and because the temperature wasn't as cold outside as the first time, it went up to about 15 degrees Celsius, which is early 60s Fahrenheit. It was comfortable in that regard. But the biggest problem I had was, for some reason, and I haven't found out why, this shuts off after six hours, consistently. It, it did it the time before, and I wasn't sure if it was me, I didn't have it set up right. It was not on a timer, but it appears it just automatically shuts itself off after six hours, and I, I don't know why. Well, you know, this kind of sucks. When I left for the woods, the forecast was, well, there's going to be a little bit of sun and there's going to be a little bit of cloud and there might be a little bit of wind, which was fine. However, I just went to the nearest gas station, which is about 10 miles away, and got on their Wi-Fi and a winter storm is on the way. Very high winds, up to 130 kilometers, which is probably 75 miles an hour, plus a big dump of snow. Ah, uh, that's not good testing uh, weather because I'm in a spot where I don't have a signal, the road's not plowed, if I get snowed in, I'm in trouble. Now I know a lot of people love that stuff, that's great drama, but it's also not very smart. So I think I'm gonna pack up before the storm hits. If you know something's coming and you can do something about it, then do it because having, getting stuck here, having to walk out to the nearest pavement and flag somebody down or so that I can get a, a tow truck is just plain dumb. I'm not going to do it. Uh, so, sorry guys, but looks like I'm going to have to end this one. But a few days later, at a real campsite, I was ready to give it one more chance. Well, it's time for the third try. Now, I'm at a different location now. It's actually colder. There's a big snowstorm. 
I had to wait a few days until I could actually get out here again. But I've also made some slight modifications to the heater based on what I'd learned the prior two uh, experiments. And the first one was a no-brainer. I had to replace that exhaust pipe with a hole in it. So I did manage to get a new piece, but I kept the old one as well. So it's at the back now and it's connected with the muffler. That just brings the end of the exhaust farthest away as I can get it from the heater and from the trailer. I also didn't like the fact that the intake for the heater was just the grid in the back of the heater here. I didn't like that. What I did is I made a flange and I've connected a length of vinyl hose so it's actually now going to the front of the heater and not the back. Theoretically, I could connect that, as I said before, to uh, the vent of my shower if I want to, or the drain of the shower. But for now, as long as it's in front of the heater, not in this area, I think that it would be good. I actually taped the inlet hose right underneath the outlet hose so I could capture some of that radiant heat that's lost as it goes into the trailer. Now the third thing, and, and I'm just trying to resi resolve this problem I had in the other two attempts, that it seems after about six hours, it shuts off for no reason. And I don't know if that's a safety feature or what it is, but one thing I thought I'd try, because again it was available, is I bought a new controller. Instead of that digital one, now I have just a dial, so it has no other features. If there was something wrong with that first controller, like it was just timing itself off, hopefully this will override it. I don't know, but I'm hoping. I, I did try going online, and I didn't see anybody else that had that problem. So, hey, I got to try something. Now, one little luxury I didn't have last time was that I can actually put the awning partially out. So if it does snow during the night, I've got a little shelter for my heater. The last time it was far too windy and I couldn't risk it. Tonight, there's a little bit of a breeze, but I think it'll be okay. Well, I'm not gonna start it up yet, but it's gonna get dark soon. It's after four o'clock, so the sun's gone down. I'm probably not gonna start it up till six because I simply don't want to get up in the middle of the night in case it needs more fuel. So I'm only going to run it for probably 15 hours. But let me show you what the temperature is right now. It's minus 7.2. Now hopefully you can read that. 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, that's going to be pretty cold tonight. I would expect it's probably going to be minus 10, maybe minus 15 Celsius. So it's getting close to zero Fahrenheit. It will be cold. However, I do believe it's going to keep the trailer nice and warm. As long as it doesn't shut off. Fingers crossed. Inside the camper, it was now below freezing, so it was time to heat it up. The temperature outside, however, dropped quite a bit. I don't believe this type of thermometer is really accurate at low temperatures, as I think the outside temperature was actually around minus 18 Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit. I feel confident that tonight I can celebrate. With a nice malt beverage called a lone bison. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's cold. Even though the refrigerator hasn't been on any of these trips, it's still ice cold. That's one good thing about the winter. You can always enjoy a cold beer. Well, it got me through the last night of the experiment. It was uh, consistent, I slept well, and it's still clicking away. 
but I thought it would be a good time to give a summary. Now, there was one issue that I kept getting over and over and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Why did the heater keep shutting down after six hours of use? And I changed the controller, I did everything I could, but there's one thing I didn't think of, and that is, what if it wasn't the heater? What if it was the battery? And guess what? It was. It was because I had my Jackery stored on a shelf in a closet, and at night I shut the door. So the little fan that was in the charger wasn't getting enough air, and it would shut off after six hours. Now I know it had nothing to do with the heater at all. So with that in mind, I might as well give a little bit of a summary as to how it did. So, did it heat? Yes, it did heat. Uh, right now, it's brutally cold. It's around minus 20, minus 15 Celsius, which is close to zero degrees Fahrenheit. And it's still, I was it managed to keep it up to my ideal temperature, which is between 10 and 12 Celsius, around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I could have increased it a little bit more. As a matter of fact, I did. Last night, instead of having it at the lowest setting, I put it up a notch. And that kept it up. Easily, if I had used a higher setting, I could have gone to what other people would consider a comfortable temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But that was not what I was looking for. I'm confident it can, but there would be a trade-off in that. Was it easy to use and set up? No. Um, I was expecting it was going to be plug and play, take it out of the box, connect a few hoses, and I was done. It wasn't that way at all. And the first problem was the instruction manual. I just wasn't getting enough information to how to make it work properly. And the second problem was I wasn't really using it for its intended purpose. And that's important. I was experimenting. I didn't know anything about it when I started. Now at least I know a little. Here's an important one. Was it safe? Ah. Uh, I was not comfortable with it, uh, and for several reasons. First of all, it only has a CE sticker on the side. There's nothing to say that it's past CSA or UL, like safety standards and quality standards. So I don't know the history, how well it was produced, and that's a concern. And if it's a concern for you, don't buy a cheap diesel heater. Get one that has actually been certified, has standards that apply to it. Um, and just the matter, you know, the, the exhaust hose, the exhaust pipe is only that far away from a, like a flexible vinyl hose, which is the fuel line. If they actually touch, that fuel line's gonna melt and all hell will break loose. So. No, I do not consider it safe, but I think somebody with the knowledge could probably make it safe. Now, as far as power, power and fuel usage, I was quite impressed. And I think, and, and this is really rough, that means over 15 hours it probably used around 130 watts, which is really good. To put it in proper perspective, for the 15 hours I use this heater each day, I lost 130 watts stored energy from my battery. About 25 watts was lost at startup, and between 8 to 10 watts per hour as it idled. And the good thing was, that wasn't much. If I had a sunny day, I could probably get that 130 watts back in an hour. Charge my batteries up and I'd be good to go. So, Yes, I can constantly cycle. I can be out for a week. As long as I have the diesel, I could be out as long as I want because I was able to replenish that power supply. Well, one thing definitely worked. Although it was cloudy all day, I still was able to generate power and I actually got the Jackery back up to 100%. So yes, 
I can use heat at night and recover my power the next day. Fuel consumption. Sorry, because I was noticing it was going down there. As for fuel, 15 hours used around 3 liters of diesel or around 3 quarters of a U.S. gallon. That's about 200 milliliters per hour or 7 U.S. ounces. You don't need a lot of diesel. That's the good news. But the bad news is, I don't know, I don't like diesel. Every time I tried to pour it, I would spill it. If it ever shuts down, yes, you do get the stink of diesel in the trailer. Um, not a lot. Would I recommend it? Um, I don't know. It did take a lot of work. And by the way, I, I did want to say I didn't want to modify my trailer. However, there was no way that I could find that would be reasonable to get hot air into the trailer without having a lower vent. So yes, I did modify my trailer. However, I needed that vent anyway. On my older camper, I had a vent in my door. In, in the summertime, you'll see I have more uses for it. It's not just for the heater. I needed a vent for other things, and in time, I'll show you why. So in summary, although I had a really rocky start, I didn't really think it was a quality item, and it, it probably, there are better ones out there, but um, I don't know. I, I've got mixed feelings on whether or not I would actually recommend it. And I'm really getting cold. I gotta put my gloves back on. For somebody that's willing to experiment, um, it's okay. I'm going to continue experimenting with it. I don't know if I'm going to use it a lot, but in situations where I have to be energy efficient, I would probably use it. That's the elephant in the room is that noise. That is one thing that I don't think I can get used to. It's like inside the trailer, it's like living inside a giant pacemaker, or it's like uh, Benny and the Jets at fast speed. Duh, duh, duh. Uh, I can't get used to that. And the other thing is if I'm camping when there's where there's other people around, like there is nobody around here right now, but if there were other people, I would be have to be really conscious of that. Is it disturbing other people? Certainly if somebody was camped right there, I couldn't use it because that would drive them nuts. However, I did experiment. And on the other side, if I walked over there now, you really can't hear it. So it's all about placement. It's a hell of a lot less noisier than a generator, but it does still give some noise. So that's it. I'm going to shut her down take it out and uh, and store it away so yes as a it's easily stored that is one good thing right now it's probably going to take me 10 15 minutes to set up and 10 15 minutes to set it down i guess that's not bad that's better than making a permanent installation which i don't wouldn't use the rest of the year that's it i hope you enjoyed this video check out my other ones as well of course I welcome comments, but I do ask they be respectful and constructive. Thanks for watching.